Uh, today we have the pleasure of formally introducing Ezra Hendrickson as the 10th uh, full-time head coach in team history. And we greatly appreciate those of you who are able to be here with us in person and virtually as well. Uh, joining Ezra for today's press conference is Sporting Director George Heights. Before we begin the Q&A portion, George will kick us off with an uh, opening statement followed by a brief uh, statement by Ezra, and then we'll dive into the Q&A portion. With that, George, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. Thank you for the ones who, who watch us on live stream. Um, it is indeed, as Jamie said, a, a special day. Um, we started a very thorough, in my opinion, a very thorough and detailed process back in September, I think, beginning of October, to find a new head coach and you know, when you when you change your head coach, you get flooded with names, um, which also shows you that the the job you have to offer is an attractive one, and I think it is a very attractive one if we bear in mind that we had more, um, or let's say several hundred applications for this job. So um, all this. Uh, doesn't make it easy because it takes time. It's very time consuming to narrow it down. We um, did this in several steps and every time we spoke to Ezra um, we were left with a, with a very good impression afterwards and ultimately we invited him to come to Chicago. We met, we spoke again and in the end we spoke for two days I think and then to finally find out that um, this might be a good fit. I am convinced that this is a, a perfect fit for the fire. I would also like to take the opportunity to thank, to, uh, to thank my colleagues, Sebastian Pelso, our technical director, Alex Bowler and Eddie Rock, um, who were so supportive in this whole process, um, who were very active and who also gave me the confidence um, to go through this. Ezra, um, a very warm welcome to our club. We are really happy um, to have you here as our new head coach um, with all your knowledge that you have of the league, of the game. Um, you are a real football mind, um, a bit obsessed like many of us and I think this is something we need. Um, it is a privilege to have you as a coach in this club. Welcome. All right. Well, first of all, thank you very much, George. Um, thank you guys for being here and welcome me to your city. Um, for those of you watching on Zoom, um, uh, sorry you can't be here, but uh, thank you also. Um, I'm very honored uh, to be chosen as head coach of this team. Um, I have a lot of people to thank. Uh, first, I want to start by thanking the owner, Joe and his family, uh, for entrusting me with this uh, duty to be uh, the head coach going forward for this team. It's a very uh, historic team, prestigious club, and so I'm very honored for that. Uh, George, Sebastian, Eddie, Alex, these guys who've helped me along the way, uh, who's with me during the interview process. Um, I want to thank them for also having faith in me uh, as far as leading this team going forward. Um, it's a great city, like I said. I'm happy to be here and I'm really looking forward to great things here in Chicago. I think uh, we have a good foundation, a good, good core group of players. Um, and it, one of the things that attracted me to the club is, is um, being able to work with these players. You know, I've worked with young players a lot in my time uh, as an assistant coach and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, as well as uh, building a team uh, with some additional players. So it's great times. I'm happy. I'm excited. And I hope you guys are excited. Uh, and the fans are going to enjoy what this team is going to be about going forward. Uh, it's going to be some growing pains. But uh, just know that we'll get this thing right and get this team back to where it belongs. And uh, that's to be one of the top teams in this league. Because, like I said, it's a big soccer city. And... Uh, we need to make sure that uh, our fans enjoy that uh, that entertainment style of soccer that we're going to bring here starting next year. 
All right, thanks, gentlemen. We'll now open it up for the Q&A. Media members here in the room, uh, please make sure to state your name and I'll let into the microphone so Ezra can, uh, can get to know you. Uh, for the media members who are with us virtually, hit the raise hand icon on Zoom and we will, Zoom, excuse me, and we'll unmute your line and it's your turn to ask a question. With that, let's start with Jeremy. Hi, Ezra. Uh, Jeremy McCool, Chicago Tribune. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. And um, you touched a little bit on growing pains, and uh, this is the fire team kind of undergoing another rebuild after going through one in 2020, um, and it's a club that hasn't won a trophy since 2006. So um, why take on this role knowing the challenge ahead of you, and how do you hope to tackle that challenge? Well, when, when I look around the, the club and see the people who are in charge of uh, changing the course of this club, um, I was very encouraged. I think they have very good soccer minds. Um, and who knows the league, uh, who knows what type of players are going to be successful in this league. Uh, when I came in and spoke uh, in my interview process, I told them about my philosophy, my style of play, and the type of players that you know I would be looking to uh, work with and to bring into the club. And they were in alignment with, with that, those things. And so I think there's a bright future for the club. Like I said, the core group of players, you know, when you look at Chicago, uh, a lot of people talk about the Phillies and the Dallas when they talk about homegrowns and having you know very good young players. But I think this club is right up there with those clubs as far as you know that pathway of homegrown players coming through the first team. And so that was very attractive uh, for me. And I just see a, very, a lot of potential, and it's an opportunity that you know I wanted to take and and you know go forward with. Uh, but like I said, you know having an owner like Joe that you know invested so much and is willing to invest so much. Is also a big factor because if you don't have that back end, then it becomes difficult. You know, I've been on several teams. I've been in, involved in this league now for 25 years, either as a player or as an assistant coach. And I know that it takes an owner with that vision and that uh, uh, re resource and willing to uh, help out in that aspect for the team to be successful. So when you put all that together, the soccer minds that's running the the day-to-day -day operations, and you have an owner like that, you have a city like this, and and the type of players that we have currently, um, it's, it's exciting, exciting times for me and I'm just happy to, you know, to be here and, and to be in charge of, of getting us where we need to be. All right, next we'll go to Brian Sandalo on Zoom. Go ahead, Brian. You're sure. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Brian Sandalo with the Chicago Sun-Times. Uh, nice to virtually meet you. Um, just uh, you've worked under some of the best coaches this league has ever produced, Siggy Schmidt, uh, Caleb Porter. What have you learned from them and how are you going to apply some of those lessons uh, with the fire? Well, I've, like you said, you know, I, I've learned from some of the best. You know, I spent most of my years as a player or as an assistant coach with Ziggy Schmidt. And then there, I worked under Brian Schmetzer and then most recently Caleb Porter. Um, and these are guys who have been very successful, uh, who've won championships in the league and who have been leaders of very successful clubs. So I'll take a lot from uh, each one of them. But at the end of the day, it's going to be what I've learned uh, uh, compounded with what I bring to the table as far as a coach and my style and my philosophy that's going to lead this team going forward. So I'm, I'm very grateful to have had you know, those experiences and learned from, as you say, some of the best, most uh, uh, productive coaches in this league. Uh, so I think when you put that with uh, my knowledge of the game and how I like to see the game play, I think it's a... It's a good base and a good foundation for me to start this, this process and uh, begin my new career as a uh, head coach. All right, we'll stick with Zoom and go next to Sam Stasekul. Go ahead, Sam. Thank you, Jamie. Um, this is Sam Stasekul with The Athletic. Thanks, George and, and Ezra. Congrats to you, Ezra, on the, on the new, new position. Um, Ezra, you've, you've talked a little bit about your philosophy. You've obviously been in the league a lot. You've won a lot of trophies. Um, the trophies that you have won and the teams that you've been a part of that have won championships, they've taken different approaches to roster building. I'm curious if you think, you know, what, what your kind of ideal approach to building a roster is. I know you're the coach and George is, is the sporting director GM. Um, so that's not exactly your purview, but I'm sure you'll be involved in it. So what, what is kind of your ideal approach and how much do you value kind of league experience? We've, we've seen teams around the league that are still playing, New England in particular, rely heavily on that and, and have a lot of success this season in particular? Yeah, well, I think it's going to be a like collaborative effort. Uh, once we get together, I think, like I said before, there's a lot of soccer minds here uh, in Chicago currently. And with my experience and uh, being around successful teams, I'll bring that to the table. But it's not going to be so much 
you know, what I want to do. It's going to be a collaborative effort. Now, uh, someone has to make final decisions, and, and ultimately, uh, it's, it usually lands on the head of the head coach. So, um, but it's going to be taking input from all uh, angles. We have uh, guys like Frank Klopas that's still on staff, that's you know uh, embedded into Chicago and in this club, and we're going to look to guys like that to help us, uh, you know, form uh, a team that's you know competitive, a team that's competing for uh, trophies year in and year out. So it's going to be a collaborative effort with input from you know myself and the sporting guys uh, and, and my staff uh, uh, once that's all put together. But I think we have enough uh, talented soccer minds uh, in this uh, organization to make this team um, very formidable. All right, continuing with Zoom, we'll go Justin Wasik and then Tom Bogert. Go ahead, Justin. Thanks, Jamie. Hello, George and Ezra. Um, Congrats, Ezra, again. Um, so obviously, I know you were focused on your job uh, as an assistant coach with the crew last season. But from the games that you played uh, versus the fire and, and maybe any film that you watched both in the season and in preparation for your interviews, what are some of the things that stuck out to you in regards to things that you think need improving the most uh, moving into your first year as, uh, as the fire's head coach? Well, uh, first, uh, I want to say that, as I'm going to repeat that, we have a lot of good young talent, but sometimes you need leadership and you need uh, someone to kind of help bring in uh, those players along, you know, a, a sort of extension uh, of the coaching staff, because as a coach or as a coaching staff, you don't really uh, sometimes have uh, uh, all that it takes to help uh, with young players. So. I think maybe that uh, some leadership, uh, some issues that might need fixes as far as uh, in the locker room. But um, like I said, we are working right now currently to bring uh, some guys in to help uh, nurture these young players in. And then we have guys like Bernstein here who, you know, who are great leaders who uh, we're going to look to to help you know, bring along the, the, the young talent. But it's a process um, and we're doing uh, a lot behind the scenes to improve the team in that aspect. But I think that's one thing uh, we need to improve because the team is so young and a lot of inexperienced guys is to make sure that we have a good mixture of uh, experienced guys to help um, uh, bring the team along. Because like I said, there's going to be growing pains. Um, we want to win every game, but it's not going to happen that way. But you, you need uh, leaders in the locker room when things aren't going so well that can you know, lift guys up and say, hey, come on, let's go. You know, and, uh, that's something that you know we've been uh, started the process of uh, looking at bringing in uh, additional help to help the core guys that we have currently. Tom Bogert. Hey Jamie, uh, congrats Ezra, and uh, nice to speak to you both. Uh, this one's for George though. Um, you know, if you just, if you can kind of get into the. I guess the head coach search process a little bit more, you know, what specifically about Ezra stuck out as him being the best candidate for this job and how, I guess, how many final candidates did it come down to? Um, we um, ultimately had three finalists in this process and Ezra was obviously one of the three. Um, you understand that I won't mention any name, that's, that's clear. What stood out, I mean, he, I think the whole assessment was not easy for the candidates uh, because we had some, so, some tricky questions that we asked and um, he did great in, in all the interviews that we had with him. He really did great, um, be it tactically, um, be it also, you know, when you, when you hire someone you want him to be hungry, hungry for this job and this, this was a feeling that we all had that he's very hungry, that he's very keen on becoming our new head coach. This was also um, very, very important for us. And then one thing that I always say in such processes is I always try to be in the shoes of a player and I ask myself, could this guy motivate me as a player? Would I run for him? And I definitely run quite far for, for him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go to Jeremy next. Uh, George, Jeremy Akula, Chicago Tribune. 
Um, after largely focusing on international talent in the last two off seasons, uh, does hiring a longtime MLS veteran like Ezra kind of indicate maybe a shift in philosophy that there'll be a greater emphasis on domestic talent? Not necessarily, and I, I do not completely agree, Jeremy, because um, when you see our homegrowns, for example, when you see how many homegrowns we have signed, um, then you see that we absolutely also bet on domestic talent. It's just and with all the regulations in this league, it's not so easy to get uh, talents from, from other clubs that really help you getting better. This is a, a little bit um, a, a problem that we have because it's not a free market like in other leagues in this world. Um, but we are open, you know, it doesn't matter where someone comes from and we want to have the, the, the best fits for our team and if the best fit comes from from a competitor then we try to get uh, the best talent but it's not that easy and um, yeah we are at the moment working on on signing new new players um, we already signed a player 12 months ago almost 12 months ago John Hato Duran from from Colombia young striker we will definitely focus a little bit more on experience in this off season that's for sure um, because I completely agree with uh, what Ezra says, we need uh, more leadership in this group. That's something that is obvious. Pat McCraney on Zoom, go ahead. Hey guys, Pat McCraney from SB Nation. Ezra, congrats to you. Um, I guess either one of you guys can answer this. Uh, when we last spoke with Georg, he had mentioned that there were three players that he was kind of waiting for the new coach to provide input on before the club decided what to do with. That was Wyatt Omsberg, Jonathan Bornstein, and Gaston Jimenez. Um, I wonder, you mentioned Bornstein a second ago, um, Ezra. I wonder if there's been any decisions on those three, and Ezra, what you thought of those three players. Uh, let me answer first. Um, I think it's not the moment to speak about the roster. Uh, I think it's the, it's the day where we welcome Ezra to this club. Um, he has already spoken about Jonathan Bornstein. This also means that um, you can be sure that uh, Jonathan will be with us in the next season. But I wouldn't want this to be uh, a media conference about our roster. We will inform about the roster um, at the later stage once we have um, really taken decisions on on most of the players that are here or most of the players who will come or who won't come to our club. Brian Sandalo? Uh, yeah, Ezra, this is uh, for you. Uh, you know, ex your uh, yeah, assistant for over a decade, a uh, glittering playing career, was, but you hadn't gotten the full-time uh, head coaching job until now. Was there ever a point where you kind of thought it might not happen and uh, just emotionally what did it mean for you to finally reach that goal of being named an MLS head coach? Well I'm a very confident uh, individual uh, everyone who knows me knows that and so I never once thought you know this would not happen I just knew that I had to keep working hard I believe in hard work um, and I just knew that I had to keep working hard and that one day this opportunity will present itself ironically it's was my first time being interviewed in person for a head coaching job. So I, I just always prepared myself and always envisioned myself uh, being in this position. Never once did I waver, never once did I you know, felt like giving up as far as being a leader of a team in a head coaching position. I always thought that the opportunity would come and I always prepared myself that when it came, I would be uh, ready for it. And, and that's the case right now, I feel very ready and, and just excited to get started and, and to just, you know, bring what I can to a team, uh, my experiences, my successes that I've had uh, to lead this team uh, back to prominence. Sam Stasko. Oh, sorry, I, I forgot to lower my hand. I didn't have anything, Jamie. Apologies. Oh, all good. We'll go next to Justin Wastick. Go ahead, Justin. Thanks, Jimmy. Um, this one's for Ezra again. Um, Ezra, obviously every manager that ever manages needs their first gig. Everyone always has a first gig. This is yours um, as a, at the head coach level. So what do you say to, to those who maybe look at your lack of managerial experience? I know you have a vast experience 
coaching and playing. Uh, but again, no head coach experience at the MLS level. What do you say to those who maybe are a bit weary that you don't have any head coach experience at this level yet? Well, I think there are always going to be detractors. Um, I don't really focus too much on that. I'm a very positive guy. Uh, maybe that's from being Caribbean. Uh, we just have a positive attitude about ourselves. So I expect there be to some pe be some people who will maybe say that. But I think for the most part, uh, anyone who's seen me play, seen me work, work with me, uh, know that I am ready. Yes, I have not had uh, MLS head coaching experience, but for three years I did coach uh, Sounders too. So I got some um, head coaching experience there. I know it's not the same, but uh, from my years of playing and from my uh, years as an assistant coach and being in a successful environment, I think I bring a lot to the table. So uh, it's just a matter of being patient. And, you know, I would say to those detractors, show up to the games uh, starting in February and you will no longer be a detractor. <laughs> Thanks, Ezra. We'll go Alexander Zigic and uh, back to them, Brian Sandel after that. Go ahead, Alex. Hi, uh, Israel Alexander Zigic, Chicago correspondent for Radio TV Serbia. I was wondering, would you like to get uh, fans in Chicago more excited about soccer as a game? It seems that in most countries of the world, soccer is automatically number one. But Chicago, for example, there seems to be more excitement about basketball, baseball, football, and uh, how to get fans more excited in, about soccer as such. Yes. Well, <laughs> I'm a big believer in you win and people will get excited and people will come to games. Um, we are going to play a brand of soccer that the people of Chicago can, uh, that resonates with them. Um, but at the end of the day, you can play beautiful soccer all you want. If you're not winning, it's going to be difficult, especially in a city like Chicago with so, so many other things going on, so many other avenues, so many other sporting events, so many other attractions that people can go to. If you're not winning, they're not going to come. And we hope to be winning. Um, there are going to be uh, growing pains. I keep going back to that. But uh, we're going to win more than we are losing. Um, and so I think at the end of the day, being successful is going to bring people to the stadium and keep them coming back to the stadium. And that's our focus uh, going forward with this team. Uh, is to be very successful and get our fans back to being engaged in this team and lifting trophies. Uh, my biggest mentor, Ziggy Schmidt, that was one thing he always said, you know, is fill the trophy case, you know. Wherever you go, fill the trophy case. And that's something that we plan to do here in Chicago. Brian Sandel. That's right. Um... <laughs> With your hire, I believe now there are three black coaches in Major League Soccer, which to me seems like a very low number. What do you think this hire means from that perspective, um, both to other black assistant coaches, future you know, black players who might want to become coaches someday, and also to black fans who look at that number and think that's a pretty low number, that there's three black head coaches now in this league? Well, I'm happy that I've worked hard uh, to get to this position, first of all. So I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, elated, very excited to have uh, my hard work pay off eventually. I do think that uh, it's a great thing to have minority leadership in organizations um, because I think uh, sometimes you're not represented uh, as well as possibly should. But for me, if any uh, coach of uh, my minority standing can see this as aspiration, uh, see this as uh, something to look forward to, uh, and then that's great uh, because I think there are some great minority coaches out there. So if I can be inspiration to any of these uh, coaches, uh, that's, that makes me happy and that, that uh, helps me uh, feel better about you know, being here now because like I said, uh, having minority uh, leadership in organizations is, is a good thing for, for all organizations. So I'm just happy that I've worked hard to get this opportunity. And if it could uh, inspire others to continue and uh, work hard and, and not give up hope and, and, and believe in what they're doing, 
and then eventually day two can be in this position. All right, we'll take one more on Zoom. Justin Wasik, go ahead. Your line is open. Thanks. Um, this is either for, for George or Ezra, whoever wants to answer it. Um, growing pains have been mentioned multiple times in this presser. And, but at the same time, Ezra, I think you were the one that said, you know, especially in a great sports city like Chicago, you need to be successful to get fans in the stands. So this year, and for the, I guess for the 2022 season, what does success look like? Very nice. Um, no, no. I mean, I I feel like every year I say the same thing. But um, of course, we want to make the playoffs. Of course, because otherwise we we do not even need to start training in January. We want to make the playoffs. It's difficult to to predict anything at the moment because we don't know who will be available and who will not be available for our team uh, next season. In the playoffs, I think this we experience again these days, anything can happen. If you have a, a good day, you can go far. If you have one bad day, your season is over. That can be terrible sometimes, um, but definitely we want to make the playoffs. All right, any other questions in the room? All right, well that will then move to the uh, quick photo opportunity